Hello, everybody, all over the world. Welcome to High GPS two times a week. So this is the first Wednesday edition episode of it, and we'll be having another on Saturday, and another on Wednesday, and another on Saturday, and another on Wednesday, and another on Saturday, as long as July month lasts, maybe longer. We're going to blast through a lot of different stuff today. So, with that in mind, uh, today's episode is, as you know, it's the Rescue Ranger, and I forgot to turn these off. Whoops. There we go. That's the Rescue Ranger. Uh, not too much has changed. They've changed how much it heals, maybe? But basically, the biggest deal is that when you shoot at it and it's taking damage, you now uh, spend metal. Do that, and it's a 4 to 1. So, in true fashion, we gotta consult the board. What does the board say about this, with the pros and cons of this weapon? So, um... The pros are that you can repair from a distance, that's cool. Uh, you can pick up buildings from far away, that costs 100 metal, but that's good as well. And it's an impromptu huntsman, and what I mean by that, if you get a random crit or gets crits created, the bolt works kind of as like a huntsman, sort of. Uh, it's also cheaper to repair per bolt than it is to swing your, uh, your wrench, so it's cheaper to repair. Uh, and it's like a building enhancer, like, you gotta have buildings to play around this. Now look at look at the cons. Well, the con is that it now costs metal. Boo. But it all ties into metal costs of engineers, such as the short circuit and Widowmaker. Metal is like the currency of which you do use to do engineer stuff, which makes sense. So it's actually not that big of a difference. If you use the Rescue Ranger before it costs metal and now that after it costs metal, it works about the same. Uh, but it is less sustained, so while it repairs more cheaply, it doesn't repair as much or as fast as you do with the wrench, which means if you're an engineer and you're pl fighting a soldier 1v1 and you have a dispenser behind you, it's impossible for that soldier to kill your sentry 1v1 unless he jumps you with the airstrike or beggar's bazooka. If he uses even the direct hit, you're able to out-repair that damage by just swinging the wrench, because this thing has to reload and therefore it doesn't have the same sustain. So it repairs four times and then you're screwed, kind of. Uh, and it's also bad thing is that you get mini crits while you're hauling buildings. So if you're the kind of engineer that carries a lot of stuff a lot of places, chances are you're gonna die a lot more while carrying that stuff. It's also building dependent, so that means if you don't have any buildings, you can't repair them. Makes sense, right? It also does less damage than the shotgun and is less reliable because it is a projectile and you can miss more, but with the shotgun, as long as you aim at somebody, you will hit them. I personally don't use the Rescue Ranger as part of my main loadout. I like the shotgun. I don't like to be as sentry dependent. But some people like to, like this loadout, for example, like with the Wrangler, that's a sentry enhancer, and this is a sentry enhancer, and then kind of distance themselves a bit from the sentry. So we got some submissions today, so that is what we are going to go through. Let me just bring them up here as I manage to close the folder. Oh, uh, yes, there we go. So, let's just hop right into it and see if uh, the huge... Uh, this is not going to be too different than what we did last time. I hope I my conclusions that I reach are the same as the one I reached last time. But, um, as long as you know how to metal manage and you kind of don't screw up, then you can do... do that. So, this is going to be none other than Mr. Bit, and he is going to be doing the Eureka rollout thing, maybe. So, we're just gonna fast forward. He runs out here, and then he builds a teleporter, and then he builds a sentry. Then he goes back to spawn, switches to the Jag, and then he upgrades all this stuff. Goes pretty gosh darn quick. And then he goes on this. The gates are about to open, and he. Almost has everything ready. So this is what you call the very standard of standard stuff. And I also like that he used the normal wrench, because this thing repairs more than the Jag. Like, Jag is great for just getting stuff up faster, but you will also lose stuff faster. Uh, it all depends on your style. Like, they're pretty pretty good. Like, none is, like, subjectively better than the other. However, I prefer, or prefer, rather, uh, using the normal wrench over the Jag. So here we go, we, this is a very standard spot. Like if you are an engineer and you're not building here on first, uh, on uh, Badwater, you are doing it wrong. If you are the only engineer, you should build here and only here, somewhere on this roof here. So then he's also using the Wrangler, which is another sentry enhancer, and allows you to uh, not bullet sponge as much because the repair rate is the same as before. 
So if that soldier wasn't an idiot, he might have been able to go for you instead of the gun, because when you have the Wrangler out, that means the engineer has to manually aim it, which means it's uh, more vulnerable. Thankfully for a bit here, the enemy team sucks. Uh, because you can see there's not enough pressure. Whenever I'm playing this and I have, you know, competent teammates and competent enemies, there's constant pressure on your gun all the time. But here we've been on ass scratching duty for a while and then he just stays on top here and... I remember when I used to play on community servers when that was a thing, I actually stopped using the Wrangler because people just didn't die to the Wrangler and they always played around the Wrangler thing. Uh, so I found it more useful to use the short circuit or something else. And here we have like a soldier and if it acts like a spy and moves like a spy, it's your teammate. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, sure. Bit still defending. He hasn't really done too much with the rescue ranger here. I mean, here he did that and then he runs up and whacks it anyway. So, in this case, uh, not much difference of just using normal shotgun, I guess, or just using this. Because what you can do, what can be a problem is that if your gun gets spammed by what we covered last week, you know, that the bison goes through the dis uh, the sentry, oh no, and then you get hit as well. Sometimes with a lot of explosives will hit you as well, it will hit you and your sentry, and now it allows you to uh, stay a bit further away and shoot at it. However, you're very dependent on your gun with this playstyle, and if your gun goes down, you're going to be very handicapped and you're not going to be able to do very much. As you can see, he just tanks it and decides to use the wrench for that, and then repair a little bit, and... The repair rate is the same, I think, so if people just keep shooting it, and yep, they do keep shooting it, so then he has to just pick it up, and he didn't even use the long-range pickup, because he was close by doing this, and then he does a little wrangler trick to have the damage reduction. However, you do have to spend the same amount of healing time and effort spent to repair it while it's under the... Um, you actually have to spend more, more time repairing it when it's under the wrangler effect than if you don't. However, it dies faster, too, so it's kind of like a... Kind of like it, but you spend the same amount of stuff uh, repairing it, regardless. I just know that I prefer to wait until the Rangar thing is over and then repair it, because it goes a lot faster. Anyway, you can see that the other team isn't really putting up much of a fight, there isn't really a whole lot happening, and you have this soldier who took a lot of damage, and there's no spies, other than the sniper we thought was a spy. Uh, nothing too interesting happening, I mean, we got bit, it's just kind of just chilling with this building. Blue team sucks. I'm not sure what they're doing. It's struggling get out of getting out of spawn. Maybe it's because they have like a lot of snipers they can't shoot. He's just hanging out. Gets killed with it. Ten seconds left. You think blue team's gonna capture? Oh. Apparently over. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> You failed! Boo! Auto Balance is like, fuck you! Why did it pick the engineer? Like, you have buildings and shit. Oh. But that's a very TF2 moment, though. Where, uh, where the Auto Balance gets you. I don't know why people get so upset over that stuff, because you obviously knew you were the, the reason for, for winning, right? And then you just happened to, in the last second, and it says that you lose. I mean, you know that you won. It's just the game says that you lost. Right. Okay. So this is Karma's camera, and he's going to be a bit more sneaky breaky with uh, this kind of stuff. So he does the teleporter Eureka effect thing. Uh, switch roos around, gets the teleporter, the teleports back to spawn. Switches to the Jag, and then he decides to upgrade everything to almost max level, maybe. Yeah, everything to max level. There we go. Then switches to Eureka effect and puts it here in this corner. This is a pretty interesting spot. And then he goes back to spawn. Switches loadouts around, and now he doesn't have to use the Eureka effect anymore. Now he has the Southern Hospitality, and then he's going to sit here, and you can see that he can barely see the gun down there. And this is a pretty good spot. So what he can do, he can repair it. However, it is super vulnerable to a sap. Like, if this thing gets sapped and then shot by the spy, that building is gone. However, that would require some competence from the blue team at this point in time, which there are none. So... We are absolutely fine, and we'll be fine the entire game. So he just picks it up and moves it back, and then he works on this dispenser with his friend. And now you have uh, what is uh, probably the most competent and potent strategy of all time in defending Team Fortress 2. And that is a sentry covering another sentry covering the objective. 
Now, if you just want to add to this castle, you can just keep adding sentry, covering, sentry, covering, sentry, covering, sentry, covering the point. Uh, and you can just do that. So normally on any kind of defense, three engineers is enough if you have three level threes and they're like all covering each other, like in a domino effect like that. Unless the other team has coordination, you're gonna win like every game. It's insane how strong that is. So you can see here, he didn't really have to use the rescue ranger there, but he decided to do so. Because keep in mind, you can't long range pick up if you're not holding the rescue ranger. Whopping 17 damage. Wouldn't have done that much damage with uh, the uh, shotgun, but might have done more with the pistol. But he doesn't have that. He's using the uh, Wrangler. You can see he's taking a lot of damage, and then he decides to tank it, and then... He just lets it die uh, for some reason. He could have picked it up. He could have done something, but he decides to build it in the exact same spot where it just got destroyed, and then the heavy dies to it uh, okay right um, so maybe he's just doing this as some kind of taunting issues like I even though if you destroy my sentry I will rebuild it in the exact same spot and I'll kill you again with it even though it's weaker or something along those lines um, they're not really feeling the pressure as there isn't a lot of pressure and he, could, he also puts the uh, dispenser forward, so his teammates have something to do. They get some health with his engineer friend. That goes twice as fast upgrading. And now, boop, there we go. Level two, three. Yes, there we go. He's probably swatting out some flies. And then you have the forward dispenser. Just got to be careful about that. So when the bad guys come, which is the blue team in this instance, then you can just pick it up and carry it to safety, which you'll see he'll do. If I remember correctly, he will do here. I'm not entirely sure what the blue team is doing. There's a spy, and he's dead. Um, if only the spy had a weapon and a kit that allowed him to go in unnoticed and sap the guns as his teams were attacking. Uh, but frankly, we haven't seen much of the blue team because uh, they're dying to heavies. So there you go, did another pickup, picked it up, uh, put it down in the same spot. You think, do you think this soldier is gonna notice that sentry? No, he died, again. Go fixing that their dispenser, and you can see this is a pretty pretty good play. However, it wouldn't be as effective as the en if the enemy team knew what they were doing. So he's just kind of watching this. There was a, another demo. I'm, I'm not going to be showing this one where he did the exact same thing on the same map, and his gun just got so many kills because the enemies just ke kept walking into it. It's like if you build a minefield and you just you just run into it and then you die and then you run into it again and then you die and then you run into it a third time and then you die and then you close the game and you go to a forum and you're like, dude, minefields are OP, dude. And it's like, just don't, just don't walk into them. They're not moving. I mean, if you die to a sentry, it's because either you didn't pay attention while it was building or you just ran into it without checking corners. It also makes a sound. It goes like bip 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 if it's level 3, and it goes bip bip if it's level 2, and it goes bip if it's level 1, and it goes bip if it's a mini sentry. So, you can tell it's there if you're using your ears. However, uh, blue team, do you think blue team's gonna win? It's 30 seconds left, I'm just gonna fast forward this. There we go, and from what he said in in the description of this demo is that the blue team did not make double digit in score throughout the entire game which is sad for them uh, but we saw that you the, that's some you know trickery it's all about you as an engineer using your creativity to figure out what you can do and also picking up and stuff we haven't seen any clutch pickups this game uh, but this is the one where uh, having it uh, kind of screws us over so keep in mind that I think a fully charged arrow from the sniper does like uh, 100 and 120 damage, I think. If, I don't, if I'm not too mistaken, if you do a headshot with it, it's a, it's a lot more. So I'm just gonna look that up while we look at Adam WHS here. Building that dear sentry here on Dust Bowl. And then, bap, he's dead. And so is his sentry. And Pad was like, I have an apple on my head. And let's see here. Yep, Huntsman, 120 damage. And uh, because you do take mini crit damage, Huntsman snipers uh, can kill you with a body shot if you're not overhealed. So you got to be careful about that. Also, who plays Dust Bowl on attack? 
It's like the, the worst thing you can do. What you should do, Adam W2S, which he will do in the next demo, is that he will actually play on defense, which is the best team to play against. And here we have the strategy I've covered. We have a sentry covering a sentry covering a sentry, and they're all covering the point. So some of you might call this absolute and total bullshit, and you would be right, because it is. It's Dust Bowl, and it's the choky old map, and it super favors defensive engineers and demo men. And uh, <laughs> the red team has three of each, three demos, and three engineers. There's no way in hell the blue team is going to be able to take this. So, um, Adam, WTS, just kind of hanging around. And we're going to be seeing some of the strengths for the Rescue Ranger, where he can actually repair this from a safe distance. And I also like that he has a little teleporter he can go up there to refill the ammo. Because keep in mind, it doesn't upgrade, it doesn't, re it doesn't restock the ammo or upgrade, like I said. But it does repair if you could hit a stationary target. So you can see he can repair from afar. However, if the soldier would keep shooting, he would eventually take it down. Because keep in mind, as an after the first engineer fires all the four um, uh, rescue ranger bolts, and I think it takes two or three rockets after that, you can just keep holding the button down and the sentry will go down. And the engineer will be forced to move the sentry, and then you can go and occupy that space. However, it won't matter in this case because there's a level three right behind it. So if you try to occupy the space the sentry was occupying, you'd die to the other sentry that you didn't see because it was covering each other. Yes. And then he just like, yeah, that's enough. Let's just end the demo there. So that's a good, uh, good little thing to do. So let's look at uh, someone else. That is going to be Cliff Puncher, and he is going to be playing Upward. And Upward First is a map that a lot of people uh, defend as engineer, surprisingly enough, because when you are defending the first point, there's no point in defending the second or last. It's important to note, defend the point you're supposed to defend, not somewhere else. All right, so he goes here and he sits down. I don't remember his loadout exactly, but he does have that Australian range. And here he goes, yeehawing. He does work on that dear sentry. Now level two, and then he can ah, safely repair it from this distance. And of course he will save some metal for it because it is cheaper to repair with this than it is with the wrench. However, it doesn't repair as much. So then he kills a spy, he works on this. And then, uh, there we go, level three. And that's a spy and the gun, oh, the gun, shit. Here, I would have liked it if he would have used the wrench instead, because he would have been faster to repair it. But he is in wrenching distance. And now he uses the wrench. You can see it heals a lot more than the bolts. But it costs more. And you also refill the bullets. Ah, oh, no! Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, what is... Oh, you, if only you had the ability to pick it up before it got destroyed. So that's also a downside of this weapon, is that you actually have to aim. Uh, with it to pick it up and in time before it gets destroyed. However, luckily for Cliff Puncher here, the other team uh, sucks at attacking and allows him to just rebuild it in the exact same spot. Uh, just a minor inconvenience. Of it. And then he just wrangles it and he's not being pressured by spies. Here would be an optimal time for a spy to just shoot it. You can see spending bolts on it while it's wrangled doesn't heal it a lot and now he is low on metal. And what will he do? Will he pick it up or repair? And the answer is repair, because they're not getting pressured. So, so far, a gun is holding just fine. He's gonna pick up some ammo down here. Still only level two, but the blue team sucks, so no problem there. Easy operation. Quite easy, yes indeed. He's just hanging out. There you go. Nice. Moves it forward for some reason, you don't have to do that. And now, they captured for some reason, but now you have a forward sentry in a really bad spot. However, it's unexpected, so people will walk into it a couple of times before realizing it's there and then destroy it very easily. You know, I say that because that's the theory. In practice, it's completely different. So we have this spy who's like, dude, tell. I don't do this! Don't do this! Don't stand on top of the teleporter exit in case there's a spy, but there wasn't, so you're lucky this time, but you also saw that the spy was sapping the exit and not the entrance. However, it's scary to do that, and you will get telefrag if you do so, so do watch that. So he picks it up, and there's some fire from somewhere. Repairs it, still holding. 
team has any issues. There we go. It repairs it once again. As you can see, the rescue ranger offers you a lot of security. However, spies do force you over to it. And now, if the other team would have been any coordinated whatsoever, they would have actually been able to kill the sentry while it was stabbed. He's up to 12 kills and 13 minus 10 assists, which makes it three. So 13 and three assists. 13 kills. That is a lot for a single gun that he has kept alive all this time. Which means the enemy has walked into it pretty much all the time. And he hasn't really wrangled it all that much either. And you can see the spies are shit. Um, there's, there, there's many of them and they're bad. <laughs> there's like three spies who are unable to kill this one sentry. Um, which makes it very easy to defend, I have to say. I mean, they're not really... Making it too difficult for us now, are they? Oh, there we go. Oh, there he is again. Oh, just sap that teleporter. Oh no, sapping the sentry. Will it go down? <laughs> nope. It stays where it has been the entire game, and will be until the end of the round. If the defense is working, don't switch it up unless you want to have fun. We want to win. There's that spy again. God, they're useless. And then, of course, it works also pretty close range, doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but if they're weak, it does enough. And there we go, out with the Wrangler, or whatever this unlocked skin is called. And then, hey, when you're troubled, you can pick it up and put it up on the high ground, and then that allows you to go down here and repair it from afar, and then you can pick it up and put it down right where it was the entire game. The card has moved quite a bit, but we are stopping them from moving forward. I mean, if only the other team had some classes that could, like, go by undetected. Gun goes down, and yeah, they win. 56 points for Cliff Puncher. Bam. Got him. Cliff Puncher is godlike. 25 kills. That is a lot. Right. So that was pretty standard. I mean, we haven't really noticed too much about the metal cost for repairing this because as an engineer, you normally hang around your dispenser or ammo packs and stuff like that. So it's just like a minor, minor tweak. And uh, I haven't really seen anyone complain or be like, God, the metal cost of this weapon made it useless. It, no, it's still just as good. Um, right. So this is going to be Koost, and he is uh, going to be doing some dumb shit. So it's eight seconds left on the clock, and he's like, all right, time to build the sentry. We don't need a teleporter entrance, just the sentry. All right? And then we don't have enough metal for anything else. But no matter, we will go here, and now we will build a dispenser right next to this one. All right, so there's absolutely no way this position is gonna fuck us in the ass when the enemy decides to attack from the high ground at any point in time. Luckily, we have the double dispenser, so we are doubled not as fucked when they jump. So here we go, getting that to level two. We have the rescue ranger ready to go. We can pick up a building. There comes a pyro. We also use the pistol because we do like to have that additional damage. We don't want to wrangle it. Oh no, gun is taking damage. If only we had a tool to repair it from far away. Yes, we do. And the gun stays up and there's a level three there behind the rock for some reason. Still alive. I mean, you can literally kill it from the spawn from blue as a devilman with no risk whatsoever, but it's still there. Uh, okay, so we now work on this thing. So now Koost got this to level three. Oh no, we're on fire. There's a fire up there. Oh no, a sniper. Oh, he got our engineer friend. Oh no, a heavy. Shit. Uh, uh, repair the building, repair this. Yeah, we're still holding repair. Yep, it's pretty good. Oh shit, we're out of ammo. Uh, metal, uh, repair from dispenser. Yes, like this. Good, got it. Shit, uh, taking damage, repair. Repair. Pick it up and say no. So now, question time. There's a little pop quiz. Where does he put the gun? Does he A, put it somewhere good, like on the high ground? Or B, does it put it somewhere interesting or like uh, surprising? Or option C, does he put it on the low ground where he gets destroyed instantly? And the answer is, he puts it on the low ground, close to the health pack. And then he's gonna reload, and he can't pick it up because he doesn't have enough metal, but then he picks up some metal, and now he has enough. 
And now, if the enemy attacks from any point in time here, this gun is screwed. Absolutely boned. So he puts the dispenser down on the low ground as well. He doesn't have any metal, so he's a failing bit of the, that thing. Oh, but kills that sniper, gets the metal back. Now we can repair this gun. And here comes someone from above. Not sure where they went. There's a pyro. He dies, so I guess the strategy worked after all. It's a bit clever. They don't expect the low ground sentry. It's taking a lot of damage. Oh, repair, 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 pick up. Could have uh, sustained it with a jag, I guess, but he's uh, opting to be sure. Then waste a lot of metal in the upgrade phases because the, when the building does redeploy, um, it does. St oh shit, that was a bad spot. Oh, okay. So Koos not in the in the best of spots, uh, not in the best of metal management, but he he managed somehow. But Koos fucking build teleporter entrance and exit next time, and it will help your building stay alive because your teammates will be like, I am here. So, you can also do some tricky shit with this as well, so let's watch none other than Rare. We're gonna be using the Rest Ranger here on Harvest, and it's also the Machete Near. So here we go, cut out some Machete, Rare, 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 I'm just gonna pass away, so just, uh, oh. Teleport gets destroyed, and he's working on this. That's no one that's the engineer stuff. Slowly turtling, securing the area, blah, blah, blah. That's all we do as an engineer. We're gonna do, 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 do work on this interesting gameplay. Whacking, whacking buildings. And then we run back to spawn because we need the more metal. There we go, build teleporter that got destroyed. Run back, get the metal. There we go. And now we move out to the middle. Sentry went down because we didn't repair it on time. So fuck, shit, ass, gotta rebuild it. But luckily we have a level three dispenser and look at this. We can just upgrade it whenever, wherever, whenever and wherever. Isn't this great? So then put down teleporter exit and then witness the trickiness. All right, all right. Here we go. Oh, a bit of a repair. We can see the gun is shooting. Oh, it's taking damage. And the jump. Boop. Oh, he's airborne. And then he picks up the gun. And oh, what's this? The forward sentry on the roof strategy. We haven't seen this before. A oh, man. If the enemy team sucks, then this will be very effective. So it's already racked up a couple of kills. And uh, it's taking some damage. But we can stay from afar. From afar by running closer. There we go, doing this. Repairing, repairing. Defending, uh, stopping the enemy spawn. Because it only has two exits and this map is shit, so. There we go, hard truth from GPS. No, no, this trick side stuff, whatever, and then he dies instantly. But that's also something you can do, which is kind of cool, which is to do a jump and you don't have to do the tech like if you're watching the tf2 tech videos it's possible to jump with the wrangler and carry your sentry with you as you're jumping without the rescue ranger however it's just a lot easier than the rescue ranger and you can also like jump first and figure out should i put it down here nah and then just leave it so uh let's look at bante he is playing here on Wormblitz. And there you go. He is going to be working on the buildings, getting them up in time, up to speed. Ready for rock and roll. Yes. So he's just watching the gun right now. So you get very focused on the sentry. He could have been stabbed here by a spy. He is taking his back a little bit as I say that, but it's a demo, so I can pause it, you know, so you know he's not hearing me. So he's just uh, watching, so. Just put some repair on that, and then goes to the dispenser for some metal. Yep, there he goes. Sentry is going to take a lot of damage. Picks it up. Yep. Gonna pick it down, and keep in mind you can't repair it until it's fully reconstructed itself. Or deployed, that is. And then he moves the sentry. Spare some time in picking it up. So this is very good when you're going to move multiple buildings over uh, bigger tracts of uh, land or larger areas. It's uh, most prominent uh, when you're attacking, and we'll see that later. So I find that uh, I find this weapon mostly useful on offense when I have to move a lot of stuff. I don't really utilize the repair option too much. So there you go. He sees a spy, kills him, and then someone's sapping his stuff. Fix it, fix it. There you go. And then now comes the hard metal magic part. So you go and you wrangle this guy. 
And then you have some downtime on your sentry, and it's taking some damage, and the pyro actually focuses you first. And oh, that's where it ends. But bonus feature, he survives because they just captured, and somehow that resets your uh, other thing. So then he just has to get out, get out there. And you can see his buildings are very vulnerable, and then he takes a teleporter, and repair, 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 repair. Yes, all right, time to reload, and... Oh, well, fuck. Uh, damn it. Pick up this thing, we're super weak, and we take additional crits, and then we die to a rocket. Wouldn't it matter if it was we didn't have to take mini crits or not, but it was just ensuring that we would have been super double dead. It's like when you're in a battle with someone, and you have, like, two health, and they have, like, three, and then um, they get a random crit for, like, 300 damage when you have, like, three health left. They could have coughed on you and uh, and you would have died just as fast. So I think this is, I forgot to mention the name, I think it is Adam WTS, and then this is the impromptu huntsman that I talked about. So here he is, we're just gonna fast forward. He's not playing on Dust Bowl on Blue for some reason. Who cares about that? He's just doing, working away at his buildings, and you can see like, in distances like this, it doesn't really matter if you're using the rest range or not. You can just use the wrench and it's just as fine as a soldier harassing your shit, and you're like, I've had enough of your shit! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We don't know how much health that had. You could have had like one for all we know. But yeah, there you go, that was the impromptu huntsman play. Uh, very strong, can happen. And then, of course, people are mad about it. So now we got a couple from me, or by a couple, I mean, uh, I think like five or something. Uh, engineer episodes are always notorious for demos being extremely long because you guys are so good that you never die. So here's one of Steel. And I'm like, get going! And my team's like, oh, we gotta dance first, bro. Just hold the fucking, hold, hold the fucking phone. Gotta dance out to the battle. I'm like, all right, sure, fine, whatever. So this is why it's great on attack, and I didn't really see a lot of people do this uh, on attack. Most of the people just use it defensively, which makes sense because engineers are a defensive class. But this one enables you to do some 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 fancy stuff, and you got to play on a bit more tricky maps. So there we go. I just put this down here, and you can see that there's already metal here. So I, this hasn't really cost me anything, and I have this down at the back, so I can repair it. There we go. And I'm not paying too much attention to it. I'm like, ah, right, it's fine. If it gets sapped, it can it can handle on its own. Then we put down teleporter exit here, and then I need this gun, so I pick it up, pick up this ammo, and then we do what my- This is my favorite thing to do as an engineer, like, ever. It's like, sentry in the back, and then my team pushes forward, like a heavy in front of the sentry. This is such a good way to push, because it really forces them out of there and uh, kills a lot of stuff. But then, of course, uh, my team has pushophobia, uh, or they just really love hanging out in chokes, or in other areas. So I have to pick this up, and I'm like, so, ah, I need help. And there's a scout. You can't see me because I'm in the corner. I'm totally camouflaged. And then we rebuild this. Pick up that. Repair. Save some. Okay, we'll pick up that ammo. Being a bit indecisive. Not entirely sure how to read the situation. Ah, oh, shit. So, so that didn't go as well, but you could see the potential of just using this to slowly go forward with your team and, and pushing, like putting it down in front of them and the other team walking forward it. However, that would require your teammates to be able to attack at any point in time and also to move forward in front of your gun. Like if you, like if I'm a heavy and I see like a level three sentry or level two sentry being built in the front by an engineer, like on Bad Word or Last or something, I always stand in front of it. So I will tank for that. And then the gun goes active and then the enemy team is just screwed. So, uh, another one with the payload. We didn't really see a lot of payload attack engineers in my demos, so I had to do that. Alright, so gates are open and the volume's back down, so with the uh, cart you get so much metal. And here I'm, I'm using a loadout that I normally would. Normally I would go like mini center or something, but just for the sake of this, uh, video I did this so just let this build in a building in the built in the building I built back to back in the base yeah so then we work on this a little bit and then we run back here and of course now we get a ton of metal and I don't have to go all the way back so I can just grab it like so and then put it down here and put down uh, destroy the dispenser because I don't want to spend additional time or metal hauling it because I want to spend the time being on the cart pushing and stuff 
And then we're just kind of pushing because there's not a whole lot with the other team. So then we go up here and then we're like, yeah, put the sentry down here. Yep, there we go. Back to pushing the cart. And the rescue ranger allows us to do kind of like this easy stuff thing. There we go. There we go. We got cover. We're still pushing because I have no idea what the red team is doing, but they're definitely not here. Oh, there they are. There they are. They're slowly approaching. And we can just do some damage. Don't really care too much about my gun, so there you go. Oh no, it's sapped. Someone's sapping my sentry, so that means, uh, hmm, do you, who, okay. <laughs> Let's play a game. Who sapped my sentry? Is it the spy? I think it's the spy. So then I'm like, well, I'm gonna go and do this, and he's probably dead ringing, right? Because he died, so always assume that. And yep, there he is. And then we whack him. And he somehow doesn't get the sap off or shoot the building, so now we repair it. And then he decides to shoot it, timing his way off, and then the gun just fucking destroys him. And we feel smart, and he feels stupid. And we repair the gun. All right. So then, of course, what my little forward operating base got destroyed, but now we have tons of stuff. And look at this. We can whoop, move this because there's such a low-pressure area. Put down this level 3 sentry there. And the reason I put it into corner facing that way is that I want it to be slower. And then after this demo, after I die, we like pushed it to, to the goal. But basically when you put it to the wall, that means it won't turn as fast for people. So people will be further in the battle. I've said this before. People will be further in the battle before realizing there's a sentry. And then they're absolutely screwed. Uh, it also goes for teammates. Like if, if you see a teammate go around the corner, he gets instantly shot. You think like, oh yeah, right, there's a sentry, sentry there. But if he runs forward and you're like, oh, no, nothing's shooting at him, I'm gonna go. And then as you're going, it starts shooting at him. Um, you, will, you will be caught by surprise. Doesn't always work, but works uh, whenever I do it because I'm so good, obviously. All right, so here it is uh, in a later spot in the game. So we're still rocking it on off. Uh, so here I may, I'm gonna do the part where I blame my team for shit. So here we go, there's a spy who's been harassing me pretty much the entire game. And I'm always keeping an eye on him. And this pyro acts like a spy, moves like a spy, but actually isn't a spy. He just forgets to press M1 sometimes. And then I wait to upgrade or repair it until it's fully back. There we go, refilling the ammo. And now I need a dispenser, which is down there. I didn't have any metal to pick it up. And then I can stay back here and repair it. Ah, you see? See how good this is? I have infinite metal. But also, this dispenser isn't helping anybody, so... And there's that spy again, fucking asshole. And then... I placed it slightly too far, but that's okay. We're just gonna build a dispenser here, and this is gonna be our home. So we're gonna be here and wrangling and other guys, and as soon as my team decides to do... We have three engineers in attack, I just realized. So there's that spy, and he backs off, so I, I know there's a spy here. It's gonna be around here somewhere and then bother me sometime. And there comes a soldier fan. I'm like, all right, soldier man, you're looking this way, aren't you? So I'm gonna put this here. And yeah, soldier man, you're looking my way. So that means you got my back. If we are looking at each other and I saw you move through my dispenser, that means you're gonna watch my back and spy check anyone that comes behind me so that I don't have to do it. And this is a good plan for everyone. So I'm just gonna stay here and you are looking at the wall and I got stabbed and it's my fault, but I'm gonna blame you for looking at the wall, you big dumb. Just some of the thoughts that go through my head, you know, like trusting, trusting people, that kind of stuff. So another example with attacking on payload, this is upward. So there you go, uh, nice little, like I think a lot of you play upward. So if you want to try this on attack, you are free to do so. Works pretty well, there you go, working on that. Now we have full stuff and then we can bring this with us. This is what I mentioned earlier where it's really great to just use the car to just bring all this stuff with you, especially if you have the Wrangler and you're not uh, like a super hot zone. I'm not sure if someone's using like the glitch where you uh, spawn kill the other enemy team here. But we work on the gun and we work on this as well. Now it's level three and then we just run forward, pick up this, whoop, there we go. And we destroy the teleporter because the spawn was moving. We pick up this as well, saving a lot of time. And now we have our forward uh, level three sentry. And of course, the enemy team decides to attack, and then well, that's what they do. And I also use the short circuit here. As you can see, and it's not very, too very effective, actually, because I, I miss up the timing and I miss up the angle. And you can see, like, ah, oh, there's a lot of bombs, and then I like 
Do this. I think, yeah, I removed some. And then now I'm in the reload state, and this is pretty weak, and I mismanaged my uh, weapon switches and reload. I should have just repaired it with the wrench, and I pay for it by getting destroyed. So be careful about that, and then the pyro decides to just burn it, which he can, and he paid for it with his life, and then I'm rebuilding this, and I have an entrance somewhere, but it's not where he needs to be, so then we go back and we fix that. There we go, another teleporter. Using the Eureka effect trick, so it's cheaper to upgrade, so it's only half the cost. Play something that they should the patch or something, because I feel like if you don't have the Eureka effect and you don't use that strategy, you have to spend 200 metal uh, on reaching the same goal. So here we have a bunch of red shit in the base, so we just do that for some reason, because I don't have anything else. I'm working on this, working on that gun, uh, switching loadouts while playing, it's fine. Soldier kills us, ah. Ah, we died, but there's a follow-up on this one. There's a follow-up to this. And this is also one of my favorite strategies to use. I've used this sometimes. I, I use this often on this map when I play Engineer and Attack and I use level 3s. So. so this is the next life. Of course we have our gun here and we're gonna make the final push. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. There we go. So here we go. We are running in. So we put it down here. This is a good forward spot to like just deny any kind of area. Uh, if they drop down in front of something and you can wrangle it quite like this, scare them away. Might necessarily not get that many kills, but you will scare them away, which can't work great. But also, we know the secrets of the uh, Rescue Ranger, which is that we can just stay behind the cart here. And look at this, this I feel so smart. You can zoop, and you plop it down behind the cart. So we'll probably almost finish building while the cart is done. And now, if anyone tries to jump, they're screwed, and we can wrangle kill that sentry. And now we can just leave it on autopilot. And then if anyone tried to jump that sentry would have shot him to bits. So that's also something you can do which is pretty cool and wouldn't be possible without the rescue range or long range pickup. So it's great for just moving stuff, great distances. And also you you, you can't be attached to your buildings uh, very much. You just got to be, ah, if it gets destroyed, it gets destroyed. I can just rebuild at any point in time. With that, we're going to go on to the final demo, um, which is here and... Um, so we have to go and okay. So we have to go and stop this uh, attack from happening. So instead, we just died and spawned. That's fine. We can just so there we go. All right, can go. Okay, so that's the thing. All right. Okay. So um, now they're pushing it and uh, we lost. Ugh. Skillful victory there from the blue team. I do hope that Val fixes that exploit. Um, I haven't done it, but there is almost every every game or someone exploiting that uh, on both teams so whenever blue team gets to the third point they win so let's celebrate with some wooing Alright, so that gave me enough time to figure out what we're going to be doing for, for next week. So, uh, I'm looking at everything we have to do. We have to go through a lot of uh, stuff. So, let's go and use the... Let's use the uh, Eternal Reward for the Spy. So, next Wednesday, in a week from now, we're going to be doing an episode on the eternal reward for the spy it got a change so in the inferno update it's, I mean, it's a while ago but we are going through this very slowly uh, where you um, you can do a you can do a disguise before you run out and it consumes your uh, cloak okay so that means criticola this Sunday and then your eternal reward next Wednesday and on Sunday I will tell what we're doing next Sunday and so forth so thanks to everybody who submitted. There's also going to be a raffle, and the price for t the, the raffle today is going to be some wonderful weapons we have also for the critical. We got something queued up there. So for this episode, you can win three Rescue Rangers and a hat. Or there's going to be three winners who win a strange uh, Rescue Ranger, which is going to be cool. So uh, be sure to join the Discord, and also I'm still looking for clips for Look at My Excellence, which is just a clip show where you can do whatever. It has to be great or funny or something. Just submit. We almost have enough 
for an episode. So if you have something happening fun in your game and you capture it in a demo, be sure to mark the star tick and then tick and send it to me and it will be great. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.